Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Adam Blompier, and I am the fantasy booker for the streak conquering, deer decimating, incongruously rooting and tooting all of a sudden, the ten time reigning, defending champion of the world, Brock. Lesnar! Also, I'm hailing from parts of unknown. Please like and subscribe. So just a heads up, this was filmed before WrestleMania 39, because we do a fun thing on WrestleTalk's Patreon that gives our pledge hammers a month's early access to these bookings. It's patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk. But it also means I don't know right now what happened in the Brock Amos match, but I'm going to assume that it was really, 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 really really, really fine. I'm sure Amos hit him with the Carly choke slam, plunge and pin Brock with one foot on his chest. I'm sure that's what happened. I'm an Amos sapien. Regardless of how the best built match on the WrestleMania card went, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably not fitting to be Brock Lesnar's retirement match, which no one thought was actually coming until reports started coming out that Brock was saying his goodbyes to people backstage and was apparently finishing up with the company. Not, no, not this way, Brock. Not with, no, no, no. Now, a lot of you will be aware that Brock is one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, even during his bored Brock stage. I had a lot of time for him because he spent the last 10 years as WWE's premier novelty attraction and somehow managed to survive a series of really b bad b bits of booking and fighting Roman forever. And also him losing his first f***ing match back to John Cena, a man that they were going to build a storyline of, oh, my life's gone downhill since The Rock beat me. And that, but he still beat Brock Lesnar, the, you know, the UFC champion guy in his first match back on the main roster. It didn't make any f***ing sense whatsoever. Not one f***ing bit of sense, you f point is, I like Brock, so I'd like to book a nice exit for the lad. But first, here's a very quick rundown of his career. Brock Lesnar's career. Turn that into a jingle. Brock Lesnar's bum. His career. This is what he's done. Brock was part of the fabled OVW class of 2002, a main roster talent influx that included John Cena, Batista and Randy Orton. It was a good class by that talent scout, a ham sandwich. Brock debuted on the main roster the night after WrestleMania X8, killing the following people. Al Snow via Trash Can, Maven via the very first F5 on the main roster, and then Spike Dudley via what I think was supposed to be Brock's finisher initially, power bombing someone over and over again until they, as a human, weren't anymore. That's how his first pay-per-view match against Jeff Hardy ended. He power bombed him over and over again, and Jeff stopped. In response to both The Rock and Steve Austin being on the outs with the company, Brock was rocket pushed to the face of the company status while that kind of engineering runs the risk of being rejected by fans today. And, you know, to be fair, it could be rejected by fans back then. Brock was such a physically charismatic freak that the whole next big thing aura, it was convincing and it was embraced by the fans. He won King of the Ring, he went on an undefeated streak and he dethroned The Rock. At SummerSlam 2002, a mere six, five months after he debuted to win the Undisputed Championship and become the top guy on SmackDown, the youngest world champion ever at the time until 2004, where because he quit the company, they put it on Randy Orton. In 2003, Brock Lesnar won the Rumble, main event at WrestleMania, had an all-timer feud with Kurt Angle, but cracks did start to show both on camera and behind the scenes. He was a heel when he first arrived with Paul Heyman, and that was good because Paul Heyman's one of the best to ever do it on the mic. He turned face at the end of 2002 and broke away from Paul Heyman and that was fine because he didn't really need to talk that much. Fans liked how dominant Lesnar was. He would turn up and he would wreck people and he would leave. Don't need to cut a promo in order to be very simply over as a babyface from that. However, in August 2003, they turned Lesnar into a heel and he was left by himself to cut heel promos, which he wasn't very good at. And also the kind of heel he was, was that boilerplate chicken sh coward heel, except when he was beating up people with one leg. And Brock's not good at being a coward because he's a ham volcano. And why the f*** could WWE never book their heels to be good at wrestling? Like, why can't he be talented 
and a prick. I mean, they kind of did that with his later run and it worked, so there you go. Those creative frustrations coupled with Lesnar hating the WWE travel schedule led to him walking out on the company after his disastrous match at WrestleMania 20. And we didn't see him again for eight long years, during which he piddled about in the NFL, which isn't a real sport, and the UFC, which is fake wrestling. In 2012, he came back. Oh my! And he immediately lost to John Cena, which is f***ing stupid. I'm unendingly baffled by what the shivering prick they're f***ing playing. He then began his WWE career as a now you see me, now you don't part-timer, content to show up, win a match, and then go away to hunt and eat wildlife. He had a feud with Triple H, which was... Fine. But everything kicked up a gear at WrestleMania 30 when GIF. When that happened, the ultimate achievement in WWE had been achieved, and from that point on, Lesnar was pretty much unstoppable for two years. His ascendancy to ultimate final boss was complete when he squashed Cena at SummerSlam 2014, which is some of the hardest I've ever laughed watching wrestling. He invented Suplex City at WrestleMania 31. He killed Undertaker inside Hell in the Cell. He got squashed by Goldberg, at which I made this face. And then he won the Universal title from him at WrestleMania. He held it for over a year, was final boss to Roman Reigns, was final boss to Seth Rollins, was final boss to Drew McIntyre, putting all of them over, eventually, before soft retiring at WrestleMania 36, but then coming back a year later as Cletus Lesnar to feud with Roman Reigns for a dump truck full of money and also some deer carcasses. They were just sort of spread out on top of the money, you know, like, like spring onion. He then feuded with Bobby Lashley, which everyone assumed would culminate at a match at this year's WrestleMania, especially after the literally bollocks finish at Elimination Chamber. But no, it's... It's almost apparently, and again, I haven't seen the match yet, and you have, and I'm sure it was just Peachy King. On and off for about 20 years, Lesnar has been a force of nature in the Big W, and if it's time for the Minnesotan Cowboy to ride off into the sunset, then it might as well be an official storyline rather than something that, oh, just is acknowledged after the fact. I mean, after the last few years where Brock has killed the dreams of countless fans by being wielded as a human grenade by a crazy old millionaire to blow up his own storylines when they become too complicated, it is the clarity that both Brock and the fans of Brock, myself included, very much deserve. So, with that being said, Brock Lesnar's retirement, let me have a go. You there, do you want more How Adam Would Book? Then you can get next month's right now. Just join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk and you can get access to next month's How Adam Would Book right now. It's How Adam Would Book, CM Punk's return to AEW. Check out patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk again for next month's booking right now. So here's where it should happen. WrestleMania 40. Easy for Peasy. 20 years after he left the company, Brock retires at WrestleMania sex number plus 10. Brock's been one of the biggest stars in the business for the past decade. He's going out at WrestleMania. So that's just how it, it, it's just how it's going to be. Not this year's WrestleMania though. Not that one. So the first major question, who does he fight at WrestleMania XL? Brock Lesnar versus question mark. By, by which I mean to say he's not wrestling the gimmick of who, because that's Jim Neidhart, and he's dead. Now, there are a few people you could choose to retire Brock Lesnar. Let's go through them. First up, Roman Reigns, <laughs> because I wanted to see your reaction to that. But also, no, you couldn't pay me to watch another one. I, they've wrestled at three WrestleManias. That's not even all of their matches, just they've done it at three WrestleManias. Next up, Cody Rhodes. Fresh match. Cody might still be WWE Champion by this point. It's a good way to solidify him as your top guy. And also, the match is literally so fresh. Cody and Brock have never shared a ring together. Literally not once. They've been in two Royal Rumbles together, but in 2016, Cody Rhodes in Stardust makeup was already eliminated from the Rumble by the time Brock showed up. And in 2023, Brock Lesnar in Stardust makeup was already gone by the time Cody Rhodes showed up. So isn't that a fun little fact? They've never been in the same match while at the same time. Braun Strowman? 
he's never beaten Brock. He was considered a dream match opponent for him one time or another, but to be honest, not so much anymore. I don't, I don't really want to see it again. Do you? I don't care. Edge, he's a big star. That's the only reason I could think of to have the match. He is a big star, but he is though, isn't he? John Cena, I mean, same reason as Edge really, but also they've had three singles matches. Cena won one, which is ridiculous. Lesnar won the other, and the third ended in a no contest. So it's a big fight, maybe a double retirement match? Maybe. Baron Corbin, because he might as well smash all my fucking dreams. Mightn't he? Bobby Lashley, because the story can't possibly be done, right? Like a kick to the dick and it's done? That's not right. Genuinely, one of the names that just pinged out to me immediately when I started writing this booking, and I can't quite shake it, even though I know I can't really get away with it, is Chad Gable. I know, right? He's little. Also, he does the shoosh thing, but I don't know, man. I really almost went with him for this video. He's the Urzatz Kurt Angle, Brock's greatest rival. He deserves to be pushed to the moon, does old Chad. He also has a connection with Shelton Benjamin, Brock's old Minnesota Wrecking Crew partner. It was very almost him, because I think that's an interesting story, David versus Goliath, but like ultimate David and ultimate Goliath. You know, you can think about that if you want, but instead, I've made my choice. Brock Lesnar's retirement match at WrestleMania XL. Brock Lesnar versus well, wait and see. At WrestleMania 39, Brock Lesnar beats Omos. I know, right? Absolutely staggering hot take from your boy. But there's a little more to it than that. We're basically continuing the story beats that WWE have already put in place, which is Brock's loss to Roman Reigns three times in a row and couldn't conclusively beat Bobby Lashley. This is what we have to work with. And even if right now it doesn't feel like WWE is actually engaging with those story beats, a waning Brock Lesnar, that's interesting. So that being said, he should struggle to beat Amos, which yes, is not ideal. Amos isn't as good at making his offense look as powerful and as painful as the story of his giant hood WWE are telling. It is a bit similar to the Great Carly in that respect. I don't like comparing Omos automatically to the Great Carly. I think that's lazy. But in this case, WWE is telling us that tall equals devastating power, but in actuality, his relatively slow lack of coordination and sort of wild swinging, his sort of lack of physical momentum actually makes a lot of his offense look weaker than, say, Bobby Lashley, who's able to get a bit of speed behind his punches. Regardless, Brock struggles to get Omos up for an F5, collapses a few times, holds his ribs. In the end, only after a nut shot that the ref didn't see, is Brock able to power Omos up for the F5, 1, 2, 3. Also, on WrestleMania, Cody beats Roman for the Uwu title, thus beginning the slow breakup of the bloodline on the way to SummerSlam with the final bloodline story beat being Jey Uso beating Roman Reigns in Detroit, with even Paul Heyman abandoning it, saying backstage that after Roman, he might be in the market for a new client. Also leading into this SummerSlam in Detroit, Brock returns, returning to a tweener-ish kind of state. Basically, he's more of a delusional heel than a straight babyface. He's sort of refusing to admit that he hasn't been able to win the big one without resorting to bollock-centric chicanery. He's confronted by Bobby Lashley, who's been like, I've been waiting rather patiently for you, Brock. This ain't over. Bobby runs through their entire feud. At Royal Rumble, Bobby beat Brock. Brock had to wait for Lashley to be carried out of the Elimination Chamber before he could win a WWE title. At Crown Jewel, Brock escaped with a fluke. At the Rumble, Bobby threw Brock out like a sack of shit. At the Chamber in 2023, Brock couldn't break the hurt lock, so resorted to the hurt cock. Bobby tells Brock to admit to himself and to all of these people that Brock's running scared. That back at WrestleMania 36, Drew McIntyre kicked the last remaining fight out of Brock Lesnar, and that's why you retired without telling anyone. Lashley challenges Brock one last time at SummerSlam, no holds. Bard. Brock agrees, saying if he can't beat Bobby Lashley, he'll retire from WWE forever. At SummerSlam, huge Hoss Fest, as befitting two huge Hosses. Once again, Bobby counters the F5 into the Hurt Lock. Brock can't escape from it, so he hoofs 
Bobby in the penis again, but Bobby just shakes his head. He guts through it, keeps the hurt lock in. Lesnar just goes for it again and again and again, and Bobby just screams and keeps the hold locked in. Lesnar looks like he's gonna pass out, but he stands up and he throws both him and Lashley over the top rope. Lashley keeps the hold locked in. Lesnar throws both him and Lashley through the announce table. Lashley keeps the hold locked in. But suddenly, someone jumps the guardrail and Lashley is maced in the face by someone wearing a black balaclava under a black hoodie, who then escapes through the crowd. As Lashley clutches his burning eyes, Lesnar picks up a steel chair and absolutely wears it out on Bobby. F5, Brock Lesnar pins Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam. Now, the next night on Raw, Lesnar calls out Paul Heyman. Whenever there's some screwy shit in Lesnar's life, it's always got something to do with Paul. And Paul denies all knowledge of the attack. He says to Brock, look, when I said I was in the market for a new client, I wasn't talking about you. I wouldn't take you back at this point. You're one of my oldest friends, Brock. That much is true. And the mark of genuine friendship is the ability to dispense harsh truths. When I brought you into WWE, you were the next big thing. Now, says Paul, you're just an old stag that doesn't yet know it's already been shot. You're bleeding out, Brock. It's time to go home. Lesnar smiles, offers Paul a handshake, gives Paul Heyman a hug, and then gives Paul Heyman an F5. Going forward, Lesnar issues a challenge to the entire company. The next match he loses, he is quitting WWE for good. And the person who beats him can say they retired Brock Lesnar. All of you take a number, because I'm going to kill each and every one of you. So it's very similar to Ric Flair's retirement. The next match he loses, your last. In that story, it was really effective, because it cast Flair as a permanent underdog, fighting against the tide of time itself, scratching, clawing, splashing his way through each and every match, until that match at WrestleMania 24. With Brock, though, it's a little different. Even if he struggled against Bobby Lashley, Lesnar's never exactly going to be an underdog. He can still put on a few dream matches on his way out of the company. He can still leap off a tractor. So he's not an, he's not an old guy. He can still go. So retiring him is marketed as this huge accolade. Retire the man who broke the streak. Retire one of the greatest of all time. And genuinely, to some of the wrestlers backstage, this is more of a big deal than the world title. And from now on, until WrestleMania, we run a series of major Brock Lesnar matches, each one marketed with the fact that if this person beats Brock, it will be his last match. A little extra spice on every card. There are guys killing each other backstage for the right to fight Brock. There are tournaments, battle royales, all this hoopla to determine the slim few who get to fight Brock and potentially be the guy to say they ended his career. This also has a profound effect on Brock. Long story short, he starts to develop his craft for the first time in forever. In a desperate attempt to prove to himself, more to prove to himself more than anyone, that he's still got what it takes, maybe he begins to fall in love with professional wrestling again. And there's lots of footage of him training training like he's never trained before. So first major card is Clash at the Castle. Lesnar versus McIntyre to Electric Droogaloo. I really like Electric Droogaloo. I put, I, oh, I'm, I like it. After retiring him to abject silence at the Performance Center WrestleMania, Drew actually gets a chance to do it on the big stage in front of a deservingly sized crowd. Drew gets him with a Claymore, but Brock manages to get one hand on the ropes for a rope break. And when was the last time, commentary asks, that you need to see Brock Lesnar resort to a rope break. The ref is pushed out of the ring. Drew goes for a Claymore, but Brock throws an elbow up and smacks Drew in the bowels. F5 pin, Brock escapes by the skin of his teeth and he's scared. He needs to head back to the gym. At Crown Jewel, we have Brock Lesnar versus Edge, a match that hasn't featured at a major WWE show since Rebellion in 2002, and then that was only a UK show. Over 20 years later, and both guys are still wrestling. Gosh, that's silly. For this match, we start to see Brock's work pay off. He's more agile. The match goes longer than expected, and it's not just straight to signature moves. We're starting to get Brock sort of retreating back to 
2012, when he first came back, 2013, when he had that awesome match against Punk, not just Suplex City, he's gonna have to do more. Brock is able to leapfrog a spear at one point, and Brock is actually able to win clean for once because he's putting in the work. Next up at Survivor Series, we have a something of a sleeper tradition, which is Brock Lesnar wrestling a much smaller guy and ostensibly David versus Goliath squash that actually goes much longer than people think and ends up being the best match on the card. 2017, he wrestled AJ Styles. In 2018, Daniel Bryan in my favorite match, by the way, which I also pause writing this booking to rewatch again. It's marvelous. In 2019, Rey Mysterio. So at Survivor Series 2023, we get Brock Lesnar, versus Chad Gable. Now look, if you start now, you can book Chad Gable consistently enough that he could be a legit contender for Brock Lesnar. You can f***ing do it. He's already one of the best wrestlers you've got. Just let him f***ing wrestle and win a couple of matches, guys. At Survivor Series 2002, Brock Lesnar suffered his first pinfall loss. 21 years later, it could happen again, especially because Brock Lesnar is completely underestimating Chad Gable when they do a contract signing. The contract signing is mediated by Kurt Angle. Angle gives advice advice to both men. Look, I've wrestled Brock, Chad, and let me give you some fatherly advice. He's a killer, but you're quicker than him, and Brock just laughs. However, when he tries to German suplex Chad, Gable just flips through, lands on his feet before tangling Brock's feet, catching him in a pinfall situation, and Kurt rushes to the mat. One, two, three. Chad rolls out the ring and say, that is how easy it can happen. Brock, versus Gable, and it's really enjoyably even, all right? Gable is out wrestling Brock. He's a younger, quicker, incredibly tech. He's a he's an Olympically technically proficient grappler. So Brock has to step it up and start layering in that amateur style that brought him to the dance in the first place. Brock returning to his technical prowess because the power game he's relied on for so long somehow doesn't seem to be working against Chad Gable, who's able to slip out of all of his throws. Gable is doing well when the figure in the black balaclava returns. He slides out from under the ring, trips Gable just one time before escaping through the crowd, and that's enough for Lesnar to hit that F5. Something that Chad Gable's been dodging the entire match. Lesnar's able to hit it finally. One, two, three. Lesnar, in frustration, removes his gloves and busts Gable open hard way for daring to take him to the limit. Brock is turning more and more heel because he's more and more desperate. It's an image that's supposed to remind people of what Lesnar did to Randy Orton at SummerSlam 2016. Because at the Royal Rumble before WrestleMania 40, Brock's opponent is Matt Riddle. Because sometimes you just gotta give a match to someone who really, really wants it because they'll normally make magic with it. Now I know Brock doesn't want the match. He's made that very clear. But I think that makes the story really fun. Play off the fact that Riddle's publicly stated he's gonna retire Lesnar for years and that Brock wants none of his bullshit whatsoever. Say he's gonna do to Riddle what he did to his pal Randy. He's gonna break his head open and really lean into the fact this is not going to be just a wrestling match this is going to be a UFC fight. At the Royal Rumble Lesnar and Riddle beat the shite out of each other. See this whole new intense side of Matt Riddle. The black balaclava guy shows up again and tries to get involved but this time he's caught by Lesnar and has his mask ripped off to reveal Ludwig Kaiser. From the distraction it looks like Matt Riddle's going to win when another balaclava guy runs in and clips Riddle's leg. Lesnar, F5, he wins again. The second man removes his mask on the entrance ramp to reveal Giovanni Vinci. So I think at this point, you can see where this is going. At WrestleMania 40, Brock Lesnar versus Gunther. Gunther, who, if I have my way, is still Intercontinental Champion by the time this WrestleMania rolls around. He is revealed as the mastermind behind keeping Brock's career alive because no one sends you home but me. The longest intercontinental title reign of all time, and it isn't even close, versus the career of Brock Lesnar. Gunther talks about the respect he has for the ring. The lack of respect that Brock Lesnar has shown that same ring over the last few years of his career. And from one Von Trapp family nightmare to another, Gunther is gonna end Brock Lesnar once and for all at WrestleMania 40, and he does. After an insane match of two men kicking the ever-loving shit out of each other, of Brock killing the rest of Imperium, Brock is beaten down and down and down. Gunther keeps flooring him with chops and Brock keeps getting to his feet 
and asking for more until Gunther rebounds off the ropes and hits him with the biggest clothesline of his life. One, two, three. Ten years after ending the streak, Brock Lesnar is retired. After the match, Paul Heyman walks down to the ring and helps Brock to his feet. Walks out with him just as he walked in with Brock into the company all those years ago. And one year later, Paul Heyman inducts Brock into the WWE Hall of Fame. It's a huge accolade for Gunter. He becomes essentially the new final boss. He should immediately win the championship at SummerSlam or even sooner, maybe even on the very next pay-per-view. Like once he's retired Brock Lesnar, you whack the belt on him and you keep it there for a year. Have him do the title unification thing at SummerSlam. Then he has to retire the title like, I don't know, like Ultimate Warrior did after WrestleMania 6. And then he's your top guy. He is your top bad guy running all the way to WrestleMania 41, WrestleMania 42. Gunther's the guy. Like, he's the fing guy. And that is who I think should retire Brock Lesnar. Who do you think should retire him? Let me know in the comments. And also, make sure you head over to patreon.com forward slash WrestleTalk because we're doing these a month in advance for our pledge hammers. It's very, very nice. And jab, nap, jab. Jab, nap, jab.